Welcome to another episode of the Good Life Visual Audio Podcast. I'm C. Muzan. I got Kabi here in the building. Say what's up, Kabi. What up, dude? Representing this shout out Detroit. We were just talking about this. I'm a wanderer. I'm a traveler. Right now, I claim Detroit, but I also maintain my right to, 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 to go ahead and claim something else when, that, when, when, the, when the spirits call. Is it so, possible to claim a city you've never lived in ever? We got to toss this question out to the, to, the, to the viewers, man, to the family, to the, to the podcast family, visual audio podcast family. Let us know. Can you claim a city that you've never lived in? Never been to at all. I've uh yeah, never even been in the state, I believe. Yeah, that's Michigan, right. Michigan, Michigan. Yeah, huh? no, I don't think I've ever been to Michigan. Is there another attraction to Michigan outside of Detroit? Is it Ann Arbor? Um, I know I that's do, where like Ann Arbor. Yeah, I do yeah. like the University of Michigan. I think if I had to pick a university, especially at the graduate level, mm. I would certainly consider Michigan strongly. Their alumni base is honestly impressive. Mm. I've never been to I've been to multiple cities where I go and walk by a bar and there's a there's a there's a University of Michigan sign in the bar. I'm like, man, they really they claim this like in in, in Boston and in, in San Francisco and 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 and, if, and I think I saw a spot in Texas. I almost fell out of my my, my seat, man. I was mm. like, what? This is incredible. So, yeah, I really respect that as, as somebody who went through multiple schools without a strong, you know, alumni base and a strong, like, just sense of like pride, like showing up. A, honestly, strong football team. Mm -hmm. It's well, really what means. brings people together. That's it. Great program over there. Jim Jim Harbaugh still over there, I think. Yeah, Jim Harbaugh still over there with his khaki pants and his uh, 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 whole milk drinking himself. Mm, fun fun fact about Jim Harbaugh from a wealth side. Did you know that part of his contract from Michigan is paid to him in the forms of a bonus in a cash value life insurance policy? Bet you didn't know uh, that. Did not know that. Did little not fun, know that. Little fun fact for you guys. I had that article pulled up uh, a while ago. And whenever I, this was, I don't know, whenever he got signed, part of it said part of his contract was a $5 million uh, permanent life insurance policy paid for again by the by by the school and that was a part of his uh bonus structure uh for for his salary so nice you know that would be an interesting episode to kind of look a little bit closer into these sort of contracts with athletes and celebrities and and sort of the interesting things in, in that they've done and how they've structured them a little differently than others yeah absolutely because there's all types of ways to be able to structure these types of things and different products. And normally universities like that are um, prime for giving these types of uh, bonuses, incentives, things that your average, your average worker may not get. Uh, but when you start talking into the millions, tens of millions of dollars, not trying to get taxed on that at the end of the day, you're still a W-2, right? You're still, right. You're still on a W-2. So that's right. $10, 10 million dollars uh as a salary taxed on uh w2 income i mean it's a lot it's a lot of money it's a lot it's a it's lot, lot. oh money for sure and something to consider when you're uh you know picking a job whether you're picking california or florida or or, or california or texas mm. or, or or california and anywhere else <laughs> mm, that's right california and the rest and the rest of the country right? yeah yeah to totally yeah. separate uh, Trade you sunshine for tax. That's what they do. Fifty, almost fifty percent, possibly more than fifty percent of your money for a high income earner in California will go to tax. Yeah. Like yeah. if I if I remember the numbers correctly, and maybe someone from California can you know forty seven. Yeah, that's about right, right? So it's well, it's if if you're at the top top tax bracket, that would be thirty seven percent federal. And then California's 13 or 14 percent. Mm. So up to like 53. Yeah, it's high. Yeah. yeah. It's high. Yeah. It's high. That makes that makes sense based on what I've heard. Yeah. So tax professional, if you're listening in California, let me know if that's correct. I'm pretty sure it is. 
uh, for sure know the federal tax rate, but I believe California is now up to 13 or 14% state tax. So let's get a tax professional on here after episode 100. Get a tax professional on here and discuss some of the intricacies, you know, as an entrepreneur, whether you have a side hustle, your main gig. And, uh, you know, how to how to help the average person kind of navigate these seeds, you know, these these sort of uh, I won't call them loopholes, but incentives mm. um, are explored by those that are able to pay for it. Uh, let, let's, let's give some to the people for free. Absolutely. And, and we, we have that stuff coming up again for everybody that's listening. This is episode 90. Welcome to episode 90. But man, we're getting bam, 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 bam. Oh, here's the button, bro. Where's the button? A great question, sir. It's right over <laughs> here. <laughs> here, I gotta go grab it and put it on the desk. We gotta get the button, man. We gotta All bring right, it we'll back. We'll get the button back. We'll bring it back. Uh, but for everybody listening, again, we're gearing up for episode 100. Technically, episode 101. I think we've figured out is where we're gearing the new- up for both. <laughs> <laughs> where the new begins, but uh. Thank you for everybody that's been rocking with us for 90 episodes, people that have tuned in, that have shared it, that have you know left us a comment, that have engaged on a post. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Obviously, you know, Kabi and I do this uh, because we want to give you the value, right? We enjoy yeah. having these conversations. We enjoy letting the people uh, hear some of the information that we've been blessed with or we've studied and we've gone gone deep in and we want to make sure that you all have it so episode 100 as we start to gear up towards the end of the year actually it'll be the beginning of next year we'll be fully into our new season and we're going to bring on some guests we're going to bring on some people that can enhance our 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 platform and enhance this show uh by giving more value different perspectives uh, it's just gonna it's gonna be awesome. So stay locked in with us, guys. Share this with a friend. Make sure that people know how to get in touch with us or know when the show's coming on, where to find it, because we got some good stuff in store for you. We're really we're really planning for it. Lock in, lock in. That's the lock in. Was that a lock? Was that a lock? Was that? All right, all right. We got another announcement for you. Might be an announcement for Chris as well. Make sure you tap into the Facebook group because we got some cool stuff coming for you after episode or in in the next uh, centennial, I believe. Centennial, something like Mm -hmm. that. Next hundred. The next hundred. We got some real cool stuff coming for you in the Facebook group. Make sure you join up on that. That's a great place to watch the show, be notified of the show. And also, we're going to be dropping freebies in the group itself, right? So if you're already in the group, you're set to go. Make sure that you pay attention to it. If you're not in the group, look at the link on the screen below there. You can also just search for it on Facebook, uh, TGL Connect, um, or just TG, oh, The Good Life. The Good Life. Make sure you join that. I think that. it's The Good Life 4. I think it's still, that's the handle on Is Facebook. Is that it? The Good Life? <laughs> I think it says the good life four. It's so facebook.com backslash the good life four. I think that's what it is, but I'm not sure. That might be the page, but you see it on the screen there. If those we'll of you that are watching, we'll post it. Ash, Ash, let's make sure we get it in the in the comments of, of this episode specifically. We'll make sure we get that for you. That's right. That's right. Because we got a lot of good stuff up and coming for you. And we want to make sure that you stay connected to us. Today's part two from our conversation last week. Last week, we were talking about the foundations of health. We were going to talk wealth, but Kabi had such great info on the foundation (laughs) that he took up the whole damn show. No, I'm joking. (laughs) (laughs) But it was great stuff. I don't know if you want to give him a recap, brother, about uh, kind of some of the stuff that we went over last week, because today we're going to dive into some more of the wealth side of things. Uh, but if you want to bring up, man, I remember you kind of gave 10 points or 10 uh, different areas to build this kind of foundation around health. Give them a quick run through what that was. I appreciate you giving me another few minutes here. I might take 30. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding here. <laughs> but we're definitely excited to hop onto the wealth side. But a quick rundown of the health side of things, guys. Uh We believe it comes down to 10 principles for you to follow that will really optimize for three things that we all want in life. And those three things are vitality, right? Vitality to live in 
high energy, feeling your best, having, you know, when you know when you see somebody and you look at them, you're like, man, that, that, that person's healthy. Not because they got big old muscles, because their aura shines, right? Mm. Their skin glows, right? They they perking up, their eyes are bright, you know, their breath smells good. They they, they got good energy about them, right? <laughs> <laughs> they just they're just like, man, this, this, this person looks good, right? Yeah. That's vitality. That's vitality. And then performance, right? meaning that you're able to execute, do the things that you want to do at the highest level, right? Whether it's physically, mentally, spiritually, do those things at the highest level. And then aesthetics. See, vitality, aesthetics, not necessarily the same thing. Aesthetics is kind of like, how do you want to look, right? How do you feel your best looking, right? Do you want to be toned, slim? Do you want to be muscular and bigger? Do you want to be slender? How do you want to look? That's the aesthetics piece of it. And the 10 principles that gets us there that optimize for vitality, performance, and aesthetics are number one, breath. Number two, sleep. Number three, hydration. Number four, sun. Number five, eating. Number and eating, obviously, we go, we went into the detail. Make sure you check out that last episode. Number six, ground into Mother Earth. Number seven, movement. Number eight, practice and fasting. Number nine, community and love. And then 10, making sure that you're evolving and producing, mm. making a contribution to society. So those are the 10 principles we talked about last week. And you can check out that episode, episode 89. Um, again, it, it's in the Facebook group. It's on uh, my YouTube. Um, all these will be available to you. You can check it out on LinkedIn. Uh, see Chris Muzon on LinkedIn. And um yeah, make sure you connect and really dive in. And if you have any questions or comments, tap in. We'll make we'll make sure we engage and answer those. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'd be curious to hear from our audience, uh, which one of those 10 are you working on or is top of mind or something that is in this season right now where you're like, this is mm. what I need to focus on this That's season. Right. Maybe, maybe it's a bunch of them, right? Maybe it's all of them, but there probably is one or two that really is top of mind for you. That's like, man, I really got to pay attention to my breath. Yeah. I really do have to pay attention to grounding and getting out into nature and not sitting in this dungeon of an office at my computer, getting tech neck. <laughs> <laughs> one more time one more time for those watching <laughs> that is what we call tech neck i know it's something that could, that, that could be is passionately attacking Passionate. <laughs> oh my gosh we're out here to eradicate tech neck guys we can do it we can, we can do it we, we, can, we can do an episode on that man I'll just do a, a slight little teaching on how you personally can start working on tech neck yourself yeah it's and we're making light of it. It's a real thing. I watch my daughter. Yeah. No, it's my, a real thing. <laughs> like my daughter, like my my like I'm curious at what this next generation is gonna look like because oh, you know I do. I have a feeling I don't wanna <laughs> I don't wanna think about it like that. But uh oh, yeah, they're gonna have some neck. yeah, they're gonna have some real deformities potentially in the way that their their spine grows or their alignment of their right of their body just from how they sit, how they are looking at their devices. Watch my daughter sitting on the couch like mm. the entire time. And I'm like, hey, pick your head up, pick your head up. Mm. Hey, sit up, come on. Yeah. Right. So maybe it's just about figuring out some other ways to, I know somebody listens like, well, get them off the devices. Sure. Mm. We'll, Good we'll luck. Do that. Yeah, we'll do Good that. Good luck. <laughs> but uh, we got to probably figure that out because it's going to definitely do some things to their vitality right to their ability to operate and function yeah as as a human being so no question even before we get there just a skeletal structure uh the, the, the muscular skeletal structure pain mm -hmm. <laughs> back pain neck pain yeah so it's definitely gonna affect breathing mm -hmm. so you know it's definitely gonna affect all those things it definitely will it definitely will uh but that being said let's continue to dive in that was the health side of the the foundation the things that you need Let's go over to this wealth side. Let's do it. This is the fun stuff for me. It's not the sexy stuff, but it's the fun stuff. I love talking. I love getting in the dirt with people. It's funny. <laughs> I've I've had this. It's funny. It's funny though. I've, I've I've had this thought, and as I'm coaching people and kind of going down the path as the financial coach, financial planner, helping people, 
I don't like the higher level stuff. I don't like talking about the super complex strategies of what to do and how to shield your money from certain taxes. Like I, I understand it. And it, there's definitely a necessity there, but I feel like the foundation is the fun stuff. It's the good stuff. It's like showing people the proper ways to do something because I know, and this is for everyone listening, I know that if you build a solid financial foundation, you will be able to build wealth. If, mm. you, bu- if you build a solid financial foundation for yourself, you can go out and you can build on that foundation. Very similar to building a house. <laughs> If your foundation is not good, if your house is built on sand, (laughs) if your house is not properly uh, rooted in the ground, right? Anyone that's ever had a house built, you know, they have to go down first before they can build up. You got to go down first. You got to make sure it's all, it's all set because then when the rough times come in life, when the wind blows, when the storms come, your house does not blow down. And that's what we're trying to do when we talk about building wealth. Some people talk about, you know, having millions and billions of dollars. That's cool, right? That, that's something, if that's something you aspire to, absolutely. But most importantly, it's just being able to build something that will give you the life that you want from a financial standpoint. Money brings us options, ladies and gentlemen. Money brings us options. So the more money you have, the more options you have, the more options of what doctors to choose or how to take care or the foods you get to choose or where you get to live or the environments you're in or the things you get to see. That's what money does. So you got to build the foundations first in order to build on top of those foundations so our financial house never blows down. All the turbulent times that are coming up, every all of the uh, most wealthy people are saying, Hey, hunker down, guys. I think Jeff Bezos just said something along those lines to us common folk. This guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> to us common folk, right? He's up there playing in the bees. But uh, he said, hey, his next maybe six months, 18 months, 24. We don't really know the time period on it, but whatever is coming up ahead, he said, it's time to hunker down. It's time to really get serious about the foundations, the, the the simple things financially. And so that's what I want to be able to go through with you a little bit today. Normally five or six different areas that we really are going to want to look at to make sure you're building that, that foundation. Number one, what's your cash flow like? Mm. What's your cash flow? Meaning mm. what's coming in? What's going out? How's it working? How do you, do you have money left over every month? How much is left over every month? Do you have an excess? Is it just kind of skating by? I think the percentage is 70 plus percent. Mm-hmm. I know I, I saw 75% at one. I saw 71% in another study. But 70 plus percent of people live paycheck to paycheck. Come on now. That means, ladies and gentlemen, yes, seven out of every 10 people that we know if they missed two paychecks from their job, if they missed two checks from their work, they're going into debt, potentially selling off some things, filing bankruptcy, who knows? Two, right? So think of that as I'm talking. If you're listening, is that you? Is that you? If you kept showing up to work, but they stopped paying you for two checks, what would that do to your life? Mm. What would it do? It would, it would put some people into financial ruin. So because of that, this is a foundational part to pay attention to. I, sh- I can't stress this enough, ladies and gentlemen. There's only two controllable things in our financial life. Raising our income, lowering our expenses. Come on now. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got. You can talk all the other investments and all the fun stuff and all the sexy stuff you want to talk about. But let's just start at the foundation. You can either make more money if you have a cash flow issue or you just got to keep cutting expenses maybe selling the house maybe selling the car maybe moving someplace that's lower expenses maybe moving back in with your parents none of these things are bad things moving back in with the parents no no listen 
for some people out there, it's the right move. Mm. For, so, for some people that are in a transition, that your cash flow is not where you want it to be. The job isn't hitting the way you want it to. The business ain't hitting the way you want it to. Mm. If you, you can go out and keep hustling, you can keep building it. You can start working more hours. You could get more strategic. You could pivot and find a different plan, find a different industry to work in, find a higher paying position. You could do all those things. But if that's not working for you, then you might have to find some ways to cut some expenses, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the time to do so. This is the time to do so. I, I think I posted this or I said this to somebody. Now is the time to start playing a little bit more defense in your finances. With what's upcoming, this is not the time to go on offense and make major purchases and buy a bunch of stuff and right go into more high 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 interest debt. This might not be the time to do that with what's up ahead. But first things first, we got to check on that cash flow. We got to understand the only thing we can control is what's coming in and what's going out. Would you agree with that, Kabi? One thousand percent, man. <laughs> and I appreciate the simplification of of this for everybody out there because we're being hit with a lot of the complex, quote unquote, sexy stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We're being hit with that because that's what catches people's attention. See, everybody wants more options and thus everybody wants more money. And so when we hear we're scrolling through Instagram and we hear, you know, blah, 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 you know, whatever that new thing is, this is how you can make an extra thousand dollars trading crypto, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But like, oh. Maybe, maybe I should be doing this. Like, am I doing it enough? This is the show for you. Mm -hmm. This is the show that will bring you peace, settle you down, and explain how to keep chopping wood. Mm, it's a great analogy. It's a great analogy. Just keep chopping the wood. Just keep going. There's no get rich quick. You know we don't believe in any of that stuff. We don't believe in anything that comes quick. Easy come, easy go. All right? They never said it was going to be easy, but it'll be worth Don't it. Don't get healthy quick either, bro. That's the that's the similarities. That's why we do this show, health and wealth. There's a lot of similarities. These are the two things that will give you the most options, the most satisfaction, the most. It's it's in your health and it's in your wealth, right? right? And you can't do either of them like that. That's right. That's right. All of these things are habits, lifestyle shifts that you build towards and you build on top of. So that's what you got to do in your cash flow. So for the person that needs to go and make more money, start thinking of your options. Uh, I I reference Robert Kiyosaki in uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, which is one of those foundational books for people that you know are in entrepreneurship or you know just building. And one of the things he says in the book is a question opens the mind, a statement closes the mind. A question opens the mind, a state statement closes the mind. So when you are thinking of your cash flow, you're thinking of how going out to make more money, let's try to refrain from saying things like, there are no jobs. I don't know how to do a business. I don't know how to do this, right? I don't know where the money's coming. Don't make statements to yourself. Instead, ask the questions. How could I afford this? How could we make that business happen? How could I get that second stream of income? How could I get that third stream of income? And if you ask yourself the questions, the answers will come. Obviously, yes, you could go get a second or third job. That's a way to increase your income. And everybody's hiring or many people are hiring these days. I always recommend starting a business. Ladies and gentlemen, entrepreneurship is the gateway to you creating the lifestyle you want. My personal belief, but I feel like there's probably some supporting evidence to that because <laughs> most of the people that have the life that they want have a business. Mm. So I would believe that that, was, that would be a gateway to, to getting there. So if you don't yeah, have Chris, this, yeah, see, go see, for Sorry, it. I interrupt you real quick, man, but I think that is, that is something right there. Ash, let's make sure we note that that is something we probably want to dive into. What does mm. that look like? Mm. Right. Starting a business. I think a lot of people get overwhelmed. A lot of people are confused mm. and a lot of people maybe start down the wrong path. That's not good for them when they think about starting a business. So that's something we should revisit. If that's something you want to hear a little bit more about. You want to chat us to chat a little bit more about. Make sure you let us know 
I think it is important for us to break that down because that's a really good point. In fact, I love to break it down myself. Absolutely. Definitely. I think we should put that on another episode of what it is. What does it look like to start a business? There's so many different ways, so many different ideas. That's right. I can make it relatively simple. And then obviously you have to go and think about it, ladies and gentlemen, remember to uh -oh. get to, to get to, I know, right. Got to use, <laughs> got to use that good old brain of yours to really think, but here's my simplified way. And we'll come back to this on another episode, simplified way. If you can learn how to create systems around sales, marketing, your financials and operations, you can pick a good industry that you understand that has a good supply and demand arbitrage, you can create a business. Mm. Say that again, sales, marketing, financials, and operations. Those four things comprise the business and you would wanna create systems around those things and then find an industry that has a good supply and demand arbitrage that you understand something about. Create a business. Now you got to use your brain and go to work. So we'll have another episode and dive into that. But just know that is an option for you increasing this cash flow on the back end of cash flow. If you're not so again, we can either raise the income, we can lower the expenses. We're either going to get a second or third job. We're going to start a business. We're going to right just find ways to create other streams for ourselves. But then on the back end of cash flow, we got to know where the money's going. We got to track that money. I know we hear that B word a lot, budget. We hear that a bunch. I, I always am a believer that budgeting is the second step. Tracking your money is the first step. It's not realistic to be on a budget. If you've ever heard anyone say, I can't stick to a budget. Budgets don't work for me. It's possibly because <laughs> I'm sure you hear that, right? Like it's, yeah. it's out there. But normally that's because we don't know where our money's actually going. You don't know how much you actually spent last month on Amazon. You actually don't. You have a ballpark, you got a little idea, but you don't know exactly where it went. And so we have to get good at understanding where our money goes. Good old saying, I, I uh, was taught to, uh, uh, a mentor of mine taught me, he said, Chris, you got to inspect what you expect. You have to inspect what you expect. So if you expect to have money, then you should inspect your money. That means we got to understand where the money's flowing out to. Not just your bills, not just the mortgage, not just the rent. Not just the car, the car insurance, the cell phone, the utilities, not that stuff. That's the easy stuff. But the other stuff, the variable expenses, the hobbies, the vices. That's right. The vices. How much goes there? No shame, no judgment. Maybe from Kabi's side, but not Come from on now. Side. <laughs> no shame, no judgment. <laughs> That's it. But we got to know no how shame. much is going there. We got to know, right? Yeah. If we, Spending some money on alcohol? Well, how much? No right. shame, no judgment. How much is going there? Right. That's important. Mm, say that. That's it. So that's the first thing foundationally that we got to start paying attention to. It's our cash flow. What's mm. coming in, what's going out. Okay. Okay. A anything to touch on that? Well, I think that's major, man, because uh, a lot of people jump to budgeting a lot. I think that they jump to that first, but putting it in the context of cash flow. What is coming in, what is going out uh, is very major. Uh, you know, kind of to add a little bit to that, brother, I, uh, uh, an interesting sort of uh, visualization that I had in the last few years is just looking at money like literally like the, like, like the ocean, if you will, right? Mm. And, and, and cash flows, literally, what is your current, right? What is the, what is the, uh, what, it, what is coming in, what is going out? Um, you might notice, you know, a bank being where you store. The ship, right? Where, where you store some of your money, uh, you make certain investments as in merchants and trading. So it, it's a cool little visualization. There's a little book. Uh, I forget the name right now. I think it might be um, uh, 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 Word Word Magic, I believe. Okay. Word Magic. Uh, check that out. It's kind of cool. It's got a money section in there that just talks about money, words, and kind of a lot of where all these, uh, uh, you know, current currency. Right, where a lot of these stuff kind of comes from. And it and it's cool. Uh, but cash flow, right? The flow of of things coming in and out, the flow of water, water literally being and it also gives a sense of um freedom, if you will, around money. Mm -hmm. Whereas in it, you know, you don't necessarily need to uh, hold on to it so tight, right? 
it can go out and do the things that it needs to do because you trust that it will come back with That's more. Right. That's right. That's such a great analogy. It's true. Uh, from a spiritual level, we would often say that like God can't bless you when your hands are closed. That's right. Right. You can't get anything in. So you got to keep those hands open, which means God can bless you with more and then you can bless other people with more. So that's that's part one or step one kind of of your foundation. Second thing to start paying attention to in your foundation is your short term savings, mm -hmm. a.k.a. AKA your emergency fund. Now, this is a 101 level, ladies and gentlemen. So don't come for me in the comments like you can't save yourself to wealth. You can't save to wealth. You need to invest. Yes, <laughs> that is that is true, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is a very, very true statement. However, that is a 202 or 303 level <laughs> concept. We All are right. talking foundation today. So we're at the 101. So a proper emergency fund, ladies and gentlemen, three to six months worth of your income set aside labeled emergency if you're a good saver six to 12 months aka if you're nervous if you have mm. anxieties around money sometimes then you might want to get to six to 12 months worth of your income i say income not expenses you'll hear both sides i will tell you that if you get to that three to six months let's just say six months worth of your income that's better than six months worth of your expenses. Why? Because your expenses should be lower than your income, <laughs> right? <laughs> it should be. It's, and so if you only saved up six months worth of your expenses, it would not actually last you six months if you had an emergency. If you lost That's your job, right. if things happen, you wouldn't have six months. You'd have maybe four because you have overhead over top of your expenses. So- I would like, and for everyone listening, for you to go out and to get six months worth of your income set aside in the bank, under the mattress. If you want to throw it in a high yield savings account, great. If you don't want to get any interest on it, fine. But this is not the money you put into the market that has any ability to lose money. This is just your liquid cushion that's set aside. Liquid. 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 Meaning you can touch it. So see moves on, man. What, you know, I think that's a, a point where there's a little bit of back and forth, you know, and we're going to touch on these back and forth as we move through this, because I think it's important. Um, so a lot of people are, uh, no, you need to put it and you need to invest and make it work for you. Do it do, towards something, put it towards something, you know, put it in the back, da, da, da. Now I, I say to that, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, brother, like put it where you feel best. This particular money we're talking about, this particular money we're talking about in the sense of uh, your short-term savings, your emergency fund. For me, it makes sense to put it somewhere where the, it actually gives you a peace of mind. If you get more of a peace of mind because it's in a safe and you can just do, 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 grab it and go take care of something, great. If you get more of a peace of mind because you can put it in, let's say, a Marcus uh, or, or is it Marcus? Marcus, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, an ally or something. And you got to do one or two steps, right? It takes two or three days to get it so that you're not just reaching for it all the time, mm -hmm. right? Then do that, right? But you got to listen. But 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 please don't go put it into Amazon stocks. That's right. That's right. That it would not classify as an emergency fund, <laughs> right? Because you put it in the market, Amazon stock could go down. Now you got less. You want to pull it out. There's going to be fees. There's going to be taxes. There's going to be a bunch of stuff that happens. So we want to make sure, and I want you to make sure that you have six months just set aside. And just like could be said, any place you feel comfortable, that's liquid. That is the key. Because again, this is meant for emergencies. This has nothing to do with investment. This is setting up your financial foundation to make sure you can go invest. Here's the caveat, right? Or here's the, I, I guess, the, the other side of that for all of you that do are eager to go invest your money. Once you get to six months, don't put another dime in that savings. Mm. You see, mm. you, can, you can over save. Like that's yeah. when it's not smart. Right. And it's like, okay, now I don't need to just be hoarding money. I do right. need to put my money to work for me. But we have to stress the importance of having the emergency fund for emergencies. Right. I see this happen all the time that we don't value the emergency fund again because it's not sexy 
it takes some discipline. It's not the thing we necessarily want to do because we don't want to just see, you know, you make five grand a month, you need what, 30 grand sitting in the bank, right? You make 10 grand a month, you need 60 grand sitting in the other side of, right, you know, wherever you're going to put it. And we don't like that feeling a, a lot. However, the goal to investing is to not have to sell your investments unless it is the opportune time. That's major. That's the goal to investing. And oftentimes people can't do that because they hit a financial hiccup. Mm. Something, something happens in their cash flow. They have a major expense. Then they have to pull out of investments, which is the opposite of why we're investing. Right. That's where the emergency fund comes in. And that's why this part is so crucial to your foundation, because you've got to have this so that you can go off and let your money work for you for the rest of your life. Once you have six months set aside, you don't got to put any more money there. Now just invest for the rest of your life. Wow. So see, moves on. Let me recap. Make sure we're getting this right. Make sure I'm getting this right. First step, look at your cash flow. What's going in, what is coming in and what is going out. Those are your two levers that you can pull. Step number two. I already forgot step number two, but Emerg I think emergency. I got it right here. Emergency for short-term savings. True or false? Do not put your emergency savings into stocks, gold, crypto, uh, 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 beanie babies, whatever, into that, uh, into some herbular. Uh, uh, investments, if you will, if you know what I'm talking about. Right? I do. <laughs> Everyone's getting into the <laughs> herbular. That's a word. <laughs> we know what you're talking about, sir. <laughs> but yes, that is the true statement. Do not. Do not. It has to be liquid, guys. Can't, can't stress this part enough. Okay? That was the second step. Third, part of your foundation. Debt. Specifically, high interest debt. We got to get out of it. We got to make sure that we are not sitting in credit card debt plus upwards of 19, 20, 25 percent interest. Oh, Lord. Other high interest loans. You gambled on something and you had to go take out a personal loan. Come on now. Man, some of you, this might be for some of you, maybe some of you have no idea what I'm talking about, but uh, uh, cash, what, what do they call cash advances or uh, yeah. like check, check cashing places? Yeah, that, right next to the liquor store. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Listen, it might even of, be in the liquor store. <laughs> it might even be <laughs> the same guy serving you your alcohol is trying to charge you a hundred percent interest on a after loan your first shot <laughs> to, <laughs> to cash advance. You probably need some shots in order to take that loan, but either way, guys, staying out of high interest debt. Right now, if you are sitting in any high interest debt, you want to make sure we are aggressively paying this off. Here's another thing I hear. They're like, Chris, should I pay off debt or should I save? What should I be doing with my money? Mm. Well, let's go back to the foundation. What's your discretionary income? Do you know what's coming in and what's going out? If so, you know how much is left over. Then what's left over, it should be split between short-term savings if you're not at six months yet, and actively paying off high interest debt. The percentage is up to you. That's where it's individual. That's where Khabib would say it depends, right? <laughs> it it just, it, it depends. Does. It depends how much debt you're in. Maybe 30% of your income or your discretionary income goes to aggressively paying off the debt and the other, the rest of it's going into savings. Maybe it's the other way around because you have a lot of debt. But regardless, the key is to get yourself out of this high interest debt because the goal is to make interest, not pay interest. Say that with me, ladies and gentlemen. The goal make is to- Make interest. Oh. You got it. <laughs> make interest, not pay interest. That Gosh, is right. That is right. Make interest, not pay interest. So we got to back ourselves out of that, that debt. Now, here's something I also hear. What about my house? What about my car? Those are called secure debt. Secure debt basically means if you stop paying it, they'll come take it, okay? That's, you know, you sign for a certain amount of time. That's actually the positive side of that type of debt. And both of those two debts that I named, cars and houses, which is what most people are have as far as debt, there's some of the lowest interest debt that you have on, and also like student loans, some of the lowest interest debt. Hopefully, if you got a good interest rate on your car, right, that was 
probably be the lowest interest, some of the lowest interest debt. But just know you signed for a certain amount of time with that car. You signed for 36, 48 months, 60 months. Try not to sign for more than like 72 months, guys, on a car. I've seen hip, some break, seen some. break, hit pause, hit pause, hit pause, hit pause go, for go, a good run. Go. Listen, this is where this is where I, I, I got to interject a little bit and say and interject my opinion, man. Opinion away. House, car, student loans. Let's not just bypass it like it's normal. Mm. It is normal. It is normal, but let's not just bypass it, right? Secured, yes. Sometimes it must be done, yes. But we talked about this multiple times, especially when it comes to the house. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that. Is that really what we should be doing? Mm. I know it's normal. We know it's normal, but should we be doing that necessarily, or is there a better way to structure it? This is not the show for that because today we're talking about fundamentals, but I don't want to just bypass it like, oh, it's just normal, right? Student loans. Don't want to bypass it like it's just normal. There's certain caveats to that. And we've talked about this at nauseum, and we will talk about it again. But again, I didn't, don't want to. Not all student loans is good, y'all. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what I'm saying. It's not all good, and it's not all okay. And when I was young, when I was signing for student loans, nobody ever really told me that. Right. Nobody ever said, hey, make sure that if you're signing for these loans, that you know how you're going to get your money back on the loan. How are you going to get your return on investment on the loan that you're signing here, Mr. Student? Mm. And if you choose not to do that, it's you're not a terrible person. You're not a failure in life. You haven't you haven't disappointed mom or dad, or maybe you have, but they'll understand later, right? It's incredibly important that we don't bypass that. And then the third, and in my opinion, the worst of the three, car. Mm. But I need a good dependable car. Yes, Mrs. Freeman, but you don't need $60,000 signed away or $100,000 signed away to, 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 to somebody to pay them for, for how many ever months. It doesn't matter, right? right? But I need a good, yes. But if you were to save $10,000, you could get a good car. And this is what I wish I did. My first car, I signed Honda. Shout out Honda. I still like Honda. Hey. But I signed on the line because everybody told me this is just what you do. Mm. You have your graduated college. You have your first job. You need. How are you going to get from your house to your job? You need a car. True. But did I need to go sign for a car that wasn't even brand new that I ended up being on? Um, thousands and thousands of dollars upside down on and I, when I wanted to make relocate and change my life it became the biggest burden that I had second only to my other debt medical debt etc that we're going to talk about in another show mm. right nobody told me that talk nobody told it. me that so, talk about it so I think it's important that if we're you know this is the good life this is where we speak on the things that's not so popular, where we speak on the things that are normal, but they shouldn't be normal. We should reconsider them. We're not just going to bypass it and be like, oh, you know, if you have secure that, you know, if you have, no, if you already have it, we're not here to make you feel bad. We're here to tell you how to get through it, how to work through it. But if you don't have it, if you're a young man, a young woman in life starting out, it's not the thing to necessarily do. And there are other ways to do it, mm -hmm. right? There are other ways to do it. How are you going to protect your money, your cash flow, if your money is consistently going out? That's three people right there That's right. that are taking your money. The government already getting their cut first. Your paycheck come, they take thank you. They take theirs right away. If you live in California, they're taking for, for, for 47 to 56% potentially, mm -hmm. right? And then student loans comes in, they take their piece. Mortgage comes in, they take their piece. Or rent comes in, they take their piece. We're talking mortgages right now. Car comes in, they take their piece. And I've seen cars like $500, $600, $700 a month. That's right. I see it too. What are we talking about? I Just so it. you could drive to the job you don't like, make peanuts, and do it all over again. That doesn't make any sense, guys. That's right. right. Somebody had told me I would have jogged. <laughs> <laughs> I would that would have been my workout. I don't need a gym membership. I'm gonna jog to work every day. That's right. Right. 
Listen. So I think I think I, I hit break right there and break that down for for the for, for for the viewers for the family. You're speaking truth, nothing but truth. And I often, it's funny that you'd bring it up because I often shy away from the conversation around owning a home. I have a I have my own stance, and I believe it's the proper stance. But again, not everybody in our society believes this way. But please understand. A home, a home, the home that you live in, the home that you have a mortgage that you and your family live in is a liability because it is taking money out of your pocket. And just like could be said, when he was in the midst of trying to transition with his car, it became a burden. It became a burden for him to have that car. The house can be the same thing. It can be more of a burden than it is a financial benefit for you. And I know everybody's going to come in the comments and talk about, well, it's better than renting because you have no equity. And blah, blah, blah. sure, understood. However, <laughs> if we're talking fundamentals and foundational parts of our life, like could be said, it is not normal to just go into a few hundred thousand dollars worth of debt to live. It is not normal to go into a few tens of thousands of dollars to drive a vehicle. That is not the norm. We might see it as the norm, but it does not have to happen. See, moves on. Let me let me let me let me let me correct that for the viewers real quick. Clarify that. It is normal. It is not the good life. There we go. It is normal. It is not good there to we do go. those things. It is normal. You should second guess it. Right. You shouldn't just sign the dotted line just because you feel that's what everybody else is doing. If right. nobody else in your life is saying, hey, hey son, daughter, hit pause, because I wish this was somebody I said, stop button. Take a minute. Let's think about this now. Let's think about this. If everybody else is because you see what's interesting, see, uh, is, 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 is that these things are celebrated, highly celebrated. Mm. Right. You get a a boy. Mm -hmm. Right. You got to, hey, you're growing up. You're becoming an adult. <laughs> right. You just got a car. Sixty thousand dollars for the next how many ever months you signed up. You're on the hook. You're an adult now. <laughs> right. You just signed for one hundred thousand dollars in student debt. You're really growing up. You're doing things. You're doing things. You are going somewhere in life. OK. You just got that mortgage that. Oh, my. Congratulations on that mortgage, right? $700,000 signed up at 4%, 5%, 6%. You're, you're really doing something. You're on the hook. Good job. You're an adult, right? You just spent sixty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on a wedding. You know, that was fantastic. We had a mm. great time. Thank you. The wedding. Oh, Thank my. You. Oh, my. Thank Do we you. have to? Right? <laughs> right? So, so these are the things people congratulate you for this stuff, man. People pat your back. You did good. So you feel like you did good. You're in the system now. We can trust you. You're an agent of the system. We can trust you. You're with us. You're not. You're with us. You're normal. You're normal. But see, these are the same people that complaining every Monday, drinking a whole bunch of coffee just to wake up to go to that office box. Right. <laughs> to get the Ooh. tech neck. Who have who have the tech neck going on, <laughs> right? They have no sense of where's the next. They, they they're struggling, right? The conversations at home, the marriage is all about money, right? It's all about uh, it's never enough. They got more month when their money ends, mm -hmm. right? It, 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 these are the same thing. This is also normal. That's the we call yin yang. That's the yin side. <laughs> right that's the opposite side of the coin right where they congratulate you but what if you are able to navigate those things in such a way that you do get what you need you have shelter you have transportation you have education you have your partner but you didn't get on the hook for it your hamstring was not strung up like the pup the swine that we eat <laughs> You know, that's where hamstring comes from. I didn't know that. 
Yeah, really? it's a hamstring sound from they, str- they string <laughs> them by the hand. <laughs> they string the ham by the hamstrings. Yeah, it's a letter. <laughs> yeah, but that's what we are. We sign up for every, every single time we, we, we sign these one of these things. That's what we're signing up for. And guess who gets rich? The bank. That's right. <laughs> the bank. The bank. Man, you make some valid points. And I hope everyone that's listening is understanding that. And I appreciate that reframe. Right. It's it doesn't have to be your norm. That is the norm in society. It does not have to be your norm. It does not have to be what we do. And again, just because people celebrate it or congratulate it or push you down that direction doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And we here on The Good Life, we want you to think for yourself. (laughs) We want you to think, do I really need this? Do I really want this? What are the implications of this? What are the ramifications of going into this type of debt? Just because I know other people went to school and took out student loans, is that my destiny? Is that what I should be doing? We want you to be able to think for yourself, especially around these topics of money and some of these foundational things. As I go, because we're going to start wrapping up here, I'm going to give you two more little quick things here because we got cash flow. And by the way, how do we avoid some of those things that that Khabib was just talking about? How do we not get on the hook? Build your cash flow. That's actually how you do it. Because the more cash flow you have, the more you can put aside, you can start saving. So then you can buy that car cash so that you can not have to worry about. And, you know, if you do choose to go to school or get some form of higher education, that that's something you can pay for. You don't need to take out loans for that. If you're going to pay for it, pay for it. Right. But how do we do that? We got to raise the cash flow. We got to get our cash flow up because I guarantee you, for those of you that are listening, if you took your income from where it is now to making $30,000 a month, things will be different. You have more options. If you kept your expenses exactly where you were, where you have them now and you did not let that lifestyle creep, that's what it's called, lifestyle creep, that the more money you make, the more you spend. Oh, I got the raise. I deserve the car. Oh, I got the new raise or the, the new bonus. I deserve the new house. I deserve a better vacation. No more Hawaii. Now it's Bora Bora. We're not, we're we're, we're not sticking here in the States. We're we're, we're going to Italy, right? That's lifestyle creep. If you can avoid that, don't keep up with the Joneses, right? If you are making sure that you are raising that cash flow, well, guess what? You can have some of these things and not be on the hook for them. So cash flow, short-term savings, your emergency fund, paying attention and staying out of high interest debt. And if you can, staying out of all forms of debt, Till we get to that 202, to, till we get to that 303 level where then you can really leverage your debt and learn how to build wealth from it. That's another side. Go to the fourth thing insurances. Insurance is literally protection, it's a foundational part of your financial plan because one of my colleagues says this we're one medical diagnosis away from financial ruin. Hence why could be an eye talk health and wealth, right? Because most people are one medical diagnosis away from financial ruin. Doesn't matter how much money you got. Doesn't matter how good your job is. You get hit with some, you get hit with cancer. You get hit with some major issue, some major surgery, something that happens, wipe it all out. Medical bills climb up, savings drop, might not be able to work, might not have cash flow come in. So we need to make sure that we're protected. Life insurance, disability insurance, long-term care coverage, the rising medical costs, number one reason, elderly people, senior citizens, baby boomers, go bankrupt is for medical debt. It's from Mm. unexpected medical expenses that pop up. You have to spend, if anybody has spent more than two nights in the hospital and you look at that bill, not not too good, especially if you don't have good insurance. So you got to make sure these things are in place for yourself. Life insurance, disability, long-term care coverage, these things are important. Also health insurance, obviously, making sure that things can be taken care of if needed. Again, hence why we do this, because we don't want you to have to go that path. Could be and I want you to live 
a vital life. Make sure all those things that we talked about last episode and episode 89, that you're paying attention to that. That'll keep you out of the hospital. That'll keep you out of some of these medical, uh, the, these areas. But if not, at least have some protection. Insurance mitigates your risk, the risk of your life not turning out the way you want to because of some sickness. So you got to put that in place. That's foundational. This is the time to start paying attention to that stuff as we head into this next season of our economy, whatever that means. Got to make sure you have some of that stuff in place. So those are four things. I'll give you the fifth one really quick. And it's this one is a little bit more abstract, but just to round out the list, got to focus on your money mindset, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Your mindset around money. How do you think about it? How do you talk about it? Do you feel like money doesn't grow on trees? Money's the hardest thing to get. You're always stressed about it. Like you said, like like could be said, it's the topic, the top of your conversation at your house. You live in a scarcity mindset. Are you in a scarcity mindset? Or are you an abundance thinker? Do you believe that money's hard to come by? Or do you know that e money is the easiest thing to come by? How do you think about it? Shifting our mindset around money, taking away some of the fear, some of the scarcity, some of the uncertainties, some of the anxieties, and adding in some of the abundance, some of the overflow, some of the things that are saying, hey, money is a tool, money is an energy, money comes into my life easily, I can be a blessing with money. The reason why I go off and I serve other people so that I can be blessed monetarily and then be a blessing to others. How are you thinking about money? What's that mindset? And how did you develop that mindset? This might be some time to take a step back and sit back and say, hmm, how, why do I think of it this way? Why, why when I you know, sit down with my spouse and, and have to talk about money that I clam up and I don't really like talking about it. Why am I so uncomfortable with this topic? Or on the other side, some people just don't care. Mm. Some people are just like, ah, it's just I don't I don't care about it. Well, you know, you can't be uh, you can't not care about it if it's something that's going to help you improve your life. That's right. You might not want to dive in and look at every investment. Maybe that's not your thing. Sure. But you got to still think about it and say, hmm, okay, am I doing the right things? Do I have a plan for my money? And am I confident and comfortable with that plan getting me to where I got to go? That's that money mindset. I highly recommend you start to take some time, sit down with a financial professional, sit down with someone that you can talk to that's a professional around money to help shift that mindset a bit. There's some good people here on LinkedIn too. I should drop some names. I can't think of any names off the top of my head. But well, let's really get some of those people on in the next hundred. Oh, for sure. We definitely yeah. will. Yeah. We definitely get some will. some of those people on. Reach into some people in the network here and uh, jumping on. But those round out your foundational fundamentals of your financial life. Ca paying attention to your cash flow, what's coming in, what's going out. Making sure you have a short-term emergency fund, six months worth of your income, wherever you feel the most comfortable. However, it should be liquid, not invested into the market or something that could lock up or potentially lose your money. Paying attention to that debt, your debt position, your high interest debt, knowing that you don't, if you don't have to go into debt, don't, you don't, it's not a necessity. Looking at your insurance protection just to make sure that you are mitigating your risk, that you can continue to go off and bring in all of the income you want to and work towards it. So making sure you have the right protection in place and then paying attention to that money mindset of yours. How are you thinking about money? Does that need an upgrade? Do you need to tune up on your mindset when it comes to money? These are the things to pay attention to foundationally. Beautiful, bro. Beautiful. There's so much value in this episode right here. We're going to have to revisit the fundamentals from time to time because I think every time we do this, we really lay down the groundwork for the people that are checking out this episode that really, you know, that this is this is the thing that everybody can fortify. Whether you have a billion dollars or you're working your way to getting that $10,000 saved up, right? This is something we can all revisit uh, some of us have greater consequences if we don't revisit them. Mm -hmm. uh, brother, thank you for sharing this. I mean, this is this is a fantastic episode. I think we're going to have some great little nuggets as well that we're going to drop throughout the week for you to check out. 
And uh, we're definitely going to come back to this one. This is the March to 100 and 101. Mm. And make sure you tap in with us on the Facebook group. Make sure you tap in with us on the YouTube, LinkedIn, everywhere you consume content. We are present. Make sure you follow and send it to somebody that is going to get some value out of this. Right. That's what we come to do every Wednesday. We've done it for 100 episodes now. I mean, 90 episodes going 90. to 100. That's right. right. We've done it for that many. We'll keep coming up. We keep showing up. We're committed to this. And we want you to let us know, are you getting value out of this? How can we give you more value out of this? Please do tap in. We really appreciate it. Um, brother, anything else to close us up? That's it, man. We've said enough. This had, again, this is a great episode. We're done. Let's go. Go Ep home. <laughs> we're, that's it. Get out of here. But for real, episode 89 and 90, this previous episode where could be dropped all of the health fundamentals. And in this episode, episode 90, all of the wealth fundamentals are going to be things to definitely revisit, share with somebody, reach out to us, leave us a comment, let us know if we can add some more value in any place. Because again, this is helping you get to not just the good life, but the great life, right? That's right. That's right. Cool. Love it. All right, guys. We've enjoyed being here with you. Um, if you, again, if you got value out of this, make sure you share somebody, make sure you like it. If you're checking out us out, uh, on, uh, Apple podcasts, make sure you leave a comment, do mm, something over there, man. Something. We see you guys growing, uh, with us and really appreciate it. YouTube. Definitely. Uh, we love you guys over there. Cause you're definitely like, I think that's probably our hottest platform right now it and is. LinkedIn as well. You professionals, you professionals, <laughs> let's get it on. All right. So appreciate you. We'll be back next week for episode 91. The March to 100 continues, and we are very excited. Appreciate you guys. And until next time, peace. Later, y'all.